Hello everybody, I hope you've been well. Today we are back in the narrow hills of Berkeley, California to put the newest version of Tesla's full self-driving beta to the test, which is version 10.69.2. Berkeley provides special kinds of challenges for the beta because these neighborhoods were built at a time where there just wasn't that many people around, and now the roads are completely jam-packed full of cars everywhere, which forces us through really narrow areas that only one car can fit through at a time, and also puts the beta into some pretty sketchy situations where we can really see the car thinking through the problems and how it's making its decisions. There's also some odd intersections, like this one where there's no stop signs for anyone. All these roads just kind of come together and you can see the Beta trying to be as safe as it possibly can by yielding to the car who just pulled out of their driveway, but instead kind of just makes an awkward situation where we're just stopped in the middle of the intersection here until it knows for sure which direction that car is going. I could see the intention there, but definitely a bit awkward. I press the snapshot button to send that clip to Tesla in case they can train on it and make improvements. Some great reaction time here, responding to a pinch point in the road with that overhanging rock on the right side. I'm really glad it recognized that, even though it wasn't visualizing it on the display. The only criticism I have is that I don't think we had to be going quite so quickly in the first place, which unfortunately is a repeating pattern in this video. Another interaction with an oncoming car here, you can see it move to the right hand side of the road and slowly creeps forward until there's enough space to get by. This was actually really nicely done, and I liked how it creeped all the way through this to show its intention, rather than stopping like older versions probably would have. And yes, to everyone watching from around the world, that is a stop sign at a roundabout. Completely defeats the purpose of a roundabout, I know, and the worst part about it is, all the roundabouts in this video have stop signs attached pathetic. We are approaching an unprotected left turn with fairly low visibility from both sides. Interesting that it shows it's yielding to the pedestrian with that blue color, but not the bicycle he's riding. Weird. Anyways, you can see Autopilot originally wants to treat this as one single maneuver, but as it creeps up, it sees a turning lane for traffic coming in from the right, which means there's a big enough area on the road ahead where it can split this maneuver into two and visualizes where it plans on stopping after traffic from the left is clear. Once it clears, it actually steers right in order to put the car into a better position at the secondary stopping point where it has a better view from the rear-facing camera on the right side of the car really impressive stuff. Elon also tweeted that this version would be extra cautious around pedestrians, and from my experience, I'd say that's pretty accurate. Actually, that's probably more than accurate. Sometimes it seems to be able to detect and respond quicker than even I can. In this next clip, I didn't even notice the person in the PT Cruiser who just started opening their car door on the right side of the road, but Autopilot sure did and responded accordingly. Detecting something so small like a door that is ever so slightly ajar is seriously incredible. This is absolutely life-saving technology. Just think of how many distracted drivers you see on a daily basis and how many lives could be saved with this. Remember, Autopilot never gets distracted. It still can't do it all quite yet though. With the mail truck ahead, there is just absolutely no space to proceed forward. Even though he did pull off the road a bit as far as he could, there was just no way. So I did have to disengage, back into a spot, and wait until he passed by. Using this software really does make me feel like a superhuman driver on the road. Like I'm already paying attention to the things around me, but it's like having hacks in a video game or something where the car is just constantly trying to identify danger around and also has those robotic reaction times which are pretty much always going to be better than a human's. It's also looking in all directions at once, where my attention is focused on a single area, which is a very human problem, but the beta is always watching in all directions. It's a very nice feeling to know that if a bee just happens to attack me at the exact same time a cyclist decides to pull out in front of me without looking, chances are things will be fine. That's not to say it behaves correctly and with the utmost safety in mind all the time though. Sometimes it makes some uncomfortable choices, like up here where it decides to thread the needle instead of pulling off to the side to let the other car through. I suppose it did the math and figured there was enough space for both of us to fit through here, but a bit too close for comfort for me, and not what I would have done. I must say though that the vast majority of interactions I had with oncoming cars and pinch point situations were handled very well, and it seems to be improving with every single software update. It has a good understanding of the drivable space in any situation, and slows down and moves over when necessary, and usually prioritizes other drivers over itself. 
You can see how it knows the car ahead would cut over into our lane to go around the other one. Maybe that one was a bit overly polite. We probably could have just moved on through there because I kind of think that's what the other driver was expecting, but I really don't mind this. I'll take slow and safe over risk to save a few seconds anytime. This next one is pretty cool. We have an approaching car ahead and it realizes there's not going to be enough room for the both of us, so starts looking for some room to the right to yield and let them through. Then the other car pulls off the road and flashes their high beams at us, and Autopilot adapts to the situation and continues right on through. Then another car approaches from ahead, this one a little more aggressive than the last, and again we respond appropriately by giving up the right of way and waiting for them to pass. And if you want to be really amazed, rewind the video a few seconds and check out how far ahead Autopilot detected that car and was planning for it. And while that kind of logic is really advanced and really good, there's some areas of Autopilot where there seems to be absolutely no logic whatsoever, like turn signals. We were signaling right and then left and now back to right and then back to left. I mean, it is an absolute mess right now. There must be a very confused neural network in there somewhere just freaking out, which part of me honestly finds pretty funny, but it wouldn't be as funny if a cop was following me. I think I'd get pulled over for sure. If we ignore the part about the turn signals though, roundabout performance seems to be improved as well. Although there's not a lot of real roundabouts around here without stop signs to test with. You can see which vehicles it's highlighting in blue and tracking what every car is doing while also creeping out to show its intentions. There were a couple of times it felt like it was trying to squeeze into one of these gaps, which I guess it could have, but decides to play it safe and wait for a pretty big gap in traffic before proceeding. Not perfect yet, but definitely on the right track. That's kind of the theme of the FSD beta. Watch how smoothly it's able to get through the intersections ahead, although they're a little confusing, where we have to travel right below red lights, which then feeds directly into another intersection. So much smoother and more confident through places like these than older versions ever were. All that confidence is not always a good thing though. As I alluded to earlier, in my opinion, the beta still drives with much too much speed in these narrow areas. Technically the speed limit is 25, but I would never be going close to that, and it seems like autopilot is always trying to get to the set speed unless it sees danger ahead. I wish it would just have a max speed of around 15 on super narrow roads like this, rather than just accelerating just because there's no direct obstacles in our path. I think it would probably make it a lot smoother overall too. Another new behavior I've noticed in this particular version is an extreme acceleration boost when the car stops creeping and commits to the turn. I knew this was going to be a rough one, you could probably hear the sigh, but I definitely didn't expect this. Yikes, did not realize it was sloped that much, and in combination with that big lurch of acceleration we did end up bottoming out. Thank goodness for the skid plate. This behavior isn't really consistent, it doesn't do it all the time, but when it does, you can really tell. Here's another instance when it happens, where the car is slowly creeping up and checking for traffic around, and as soon as it sees a car, it just lurches forward to get in front of it. You can even hear stuff in my car moving around. I know the video doesn't do it much justice, but trust me, this is a lot of acceleration. Too much in my opinion, but I am glad it's not getting stuck in the road much anymore. The other big problem right now that Autopilot has is unpredictable humans. That is probably one of the top reasons I disengage. The first thing that happens here is the car in front of us decides to pull over to the right hand side and park. A turn signal would have been nice, but that was fine, and as Autopilot is going around and figuring out the situation, the guy behind us gets impatient and decides to pass. Then when it's our turn to go, things get extra awkward, and you can see it trying to plan a path away from his car, but it does result in a disengagement. There wasn't really a risk of collision here, I just didn't want to be so close to that guy. In summary, I'd say we're seeing a pattern here where firmware version after firmware version, the beta is getting more and more confident and has less false slowdowns or problems through intersections. And this version is definitely the best of any so far at all of those things. But it does come at a cost in that sometimes it makes me a bit uncomfortable with how brave it is and how quickly it tries to get through some of these areas. In the city, some of these moves would feel right at home, but out here I feel like it's a bit much sometimes, and I'd rather have it drive more chill and at a more consistent speed. And I realize I could always manually adjust the set speed down, and it would probably be a lot smoother, but that's just not the true spirit of full self-driving. The car should just know better.
Thank you so much for watching, truly. And until next time, bye.